Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 10 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture I was discussing with you the concept of central tendency. In particular we discussed the geometric mean and the harmonic mean and after that we discussed a relationship that exists between the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean and the harmonic mean. Also towards the end of the last lecture I conveyed to you two other measures of central tendency, the mid range and the mid quartile range. Today I am going to begin with you another extremely important concept and that is the concept of dispersion. Dispersion se kya murad hai? Dispersion ka matlab hai the variability that exists in your data set. Jaisa ki aap jante hain kisi bhi phenomenon ke baare mein जब आप कोई डेटा कलेक्ट करते हैं तो वो तमाम वैल्यूज एक बराबर नहीं होती बल्कि सब एक दूसरे से वेरी कर रही होती हैं यही जो वेरिएबिलिटी है द वेरिएबिलिटी दैट एग्जिस्ट्स बिटवीन ऑल दीस वैल्यूज दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट एंड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस दैट वी शुड बी एबल टू हैव सम वे ऑफ मेजरिंग the amount of variability that is present in our data set. Let me explain this point to you with the help of an example. In a technical college, it may well be the case that the ages of a group of first year students are quite consistent. For example, 17, 18, 18, 19, 18 and so on. They may all be more or less of the same age. On the contrary, a class of evening students undertaking a course of study in their spare time may show just the opposite situation as far as the ages of these students are concerned. For example, their ages may be 35, 23, 19, 48, 32 and so on. I am sure that this example se aapko ek dam se ye baat vaze ho gai hogi ke jabke pehli class be bohat kam variability pai jati hai with regard to age, in the second class there is a lot of variability. Yehi jo concept hai this is the topic of our today's lecture and it is a concept which is as important as the concept of average. Lekin um, ajeeb ittifaq hai ke ek layman jo hai wo average ki baat to kafi asani ke saath samajh jata hai aur uh, uske zehen mein intuitively ek idea hota hai ke if there is a set of data uski ek average value hogi lekin ye jo uske sath ka ye dusra jo concept hai ke usi data mein jo variability pai jati hai ek layman aam taur pe somehow is cheez ko itna zyada ahmiyat nahi de pata ya itni zyada iski significance ko appreciate nahi kar pata jitna ke average ko karta hai मैं आपको ये कन्वे करना चाहती हूँ कि this concept is as important as the concept of average. After all, unless there is some variability in your data set, what is it that you are trying to average? Average तो आप करेंगे ही तब if there is variability in your data. Let me try to explain this to you with the help of another example. Suppose 
that the sizes of the classes in two comprehensive schools in two different areas are as follows. Ab jaisa ke aap is table mein dekh rahi hain, the first column represents the number of pupils in a class, in other words the class size and these class sizes are 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to 29 and so on and it goes up to quite a large class size and that is 45 to 49. लेकिन अब अगर आप उन दोनों एरियाज उन दोनों लोकेलिटीज को कंपेयर करें तो आप देखे देख रहे हैं कि एरिया ए में देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल स्कूल इन विच द क्लास साइज इज 10 टू 14 और 40 टू 44 और 45 टू 49 ऑल द क्लास साइजेस इन दिस स्कूल रेंज between 15 to 19 and 35 to 39. On the contrary, in area B, the situation is quite different and we have five classes in the school uh, whose class size is only 10 to 14 and on the other end of the table, we have three classes with class size 45 to 49 and three classes with class size 40 to 44. If we compute the arithmetic mean for both these areas, we find that the average class size for both the areas is identical and it is 27.33. Lekin students, Jaisa ke mene abhi aapko explain kiya, variability ke point of view se the two areas are quite different and if we plot these two frequency distributions on the same graph, you will realize that the two distributions are absolutely different. As you now see on the screen, the spread of the distribution for area A is much less than the spread of the distribution for area B. But as I just mentioned, the average value that is the arithmetic mean for both the distributions is identical and that is 27.33. अब ये तो वाजे हो गया कि ये distributions identical नहीं हैं, in spite of the fact that the arithmetic mean is the same. तो अब crucial question यही है कि how do we distinguish between the two uh, distributions? देखिए graphically तो नजर आ रहा है कि they are different, but it's not enough for me to just say that it's obvious from the graph that they are different. We have to have some numerical measure to measure the variability, the spread, the scatter of the distribution of locality A as well as of locality B. And the moment we have some proper numerical way of measuring these, these quantities, then of course we are able to compare the two distributions in a proper way. Jaisa ke aapne central tendency ke case mein dekha tha, there were quite a few ways of measuring the central tendency of a data set. You remember all those things that we have discussed, the arithmetic mean, the geometric mean, the harmonic mean, the median and the mode. Isi tara students, we have different ways of measuring the spread of our distribution. I will discuss with you four very basic and important measures of dispersion. These are the range, the quartile deviation, the mean deviation and the most important and the most widely used that is the standard deviation. 
لیکن بیشتر اس کے کہ ہم ان کو ایک ایک کر کے پک اپ کریں اسٹوڈنٹس میں آپ کو ایک اور نہایت امپورٹنٹ پوائنٹ کنوے کرنا چاہتی ہوں اور وہ یہ ہے کہ یہ جو چاروں نام میں نے ابھی آپ کو لیے دیز آر آل کالڈ ایپسلوٹ میجرز آف ڈسپرجن ایپسلوٹ سے مراد یہ ہے کہ فار آل دیز میجرز یور آنسر از ایکسپریسڈ ان دا سیم یونٹس ایز یور ڈیٹا سیٹ لیٹ می سی دس اگین این ایپسلوٹ میجر آف ڈسپرجن از ون that measures the dispersion in terms of the same units or in the square of the units as the units of the data. For example, if the units of the data are rupees, meters, kilograms, etc., the units of the measures of dispersion will also be rupees, meters, kilograms, ایکسیٹرا اس کے برعکس اے ریلیٹو میجر آف ڈسپرجن از دیٹ وچ ایکسپریسز دی ایپسلوٹ میجر آف ڈسپرجن ریلیٹو ٹو دی ریلیونٹ ایوریج اینڈ ملٹیپلائڈ بائی ہنڈریڈ مینی ٹائمس اینڈ ان دس وے اٹ از اے پیور نمبر انڈیپینڈنٹ آف دا یونٹس in which the data has been expressed. Formally speaking, a relative measure of dispersion is one that is expressed in the form of a ratio, coefficient or percentage. And as such, it is independent of the units of measurement. Relative measure of dispersion compute karne ka fayda ye hota hai کہ بیکاز اٹ از اے پیور نمبر دیر فور اٹ کین بی یوزڈ فار پرپزز آف کمپیرزن یو آر ایبل ٹو کمپیئر دا ڈسپرجن آف ون ڈیٹا سیٹ ود دا ڈسپرجن آف این ادر اوکے لیٹ اس ناؤ بگن دا ڈسکشن آف دا ویریس میجرز آف ڈسپرجن ون بائی ون آئی اسٹارٹ ود دا سمپلیسٹ اینڈ دیٹ از دا رینج دا رینج از ڈیفائنڈ as the difference between the two extreme values of a data set that is r is equal to xm minus x0 where xm represents the maximum value and x0 the smallest aapko yaad hoga ki ye to wo quantity hai jisko aap pehle bhi take up kar chuke hain you will remember that when you first learned how to construct a frequency distribution from raw data uh, this was one of the very first steps that you did you found the range and then you divided it by the number of classes that you wanted to have is waqt mai is quantity ka zikr dispersion scatter spread آف دا ڈیٹا سیٹ کے حوالے سے کر رہی ہوں اور آپ اگری کریں گے کہ اس سے زیادہ سمپل کوئی میجر ہو ہی نہیں سکتا ٹو ڈٹرمن دا اسپریڈ آف یور ڈیٹا اگر آپ اس کو گرافیکلی دیکھیں تو جیسا کہ اب آپ اسکرین پر دیکھ رہے ہیں اٹ از دا ڈسٹنس بٹوین دا اسمالسٹ ویلیو وچ لائز at the left end of your distribution and the highest value which lies on the right side. I hope that from this diagram it is obvious to you that for any distribution which has a greater variability between the extreme values this distance will obviously it will be longer and for a distribution where it is a tighter distribution and there is not that much difference between the two extreme values obviously the range will be a smaller quantity as is obvious the range is the easiest measure of dispersion however students 
you must realize that it has two serious disadvantages. The first point is that it is based on only the two extreme values and as such it ignores all the information that is present in the intermediate values. So, is me kabat ye nikalti hai ke if we are trying to measure the variability of the data set, uh, on principle, all the values should be utilized to compute this variability. Why is it that we are ignoring all this information that is in the all these values which are inside? And the second point is that because of this very fact that it is only the two extreme values, students sometimes the range can be quite misleading. For example, suppose that uh, there is this test, this professor has conducted a test which was very difficult and most of the students um, got very low marks and the marks were something like 2, 3, 7, 4, 5 out of 20. Like in sirf ek student hai who is very intelligent and he is able to get 18 out of 20 in this very test. Ab agar aap variability of marks measure karna chahe by way of the range, what will you obtain? The highest mark is 18, the lowest mark is 2 and the range comes out to be 16. But you should realize students that this number 16 is not a very good representative of the variability that is present in this data set in all those marks which were quite low except for this one lone mark which was so high. Agar sirf ye ek number is data set mein maujood na hota, to baaki numberon ki range 16 ki nisbat bahut kam hoti. And in this way, if you have an extreme value in your data set, the range is absolutely inappropriate as a measure of dispersion. Of course, there are situations where the range is appropriately used as a measure of dispersion. For example, in case of statistical quality control charts, in the case of stock prices and also in the case of daily temperature. Har roz hum aap television pe dekhte aur sunte hain ke aaj ka minimum temperature itna tha aur maximum temperature itna tha. Achha ab mein aap ke saath ek technical baat karne lagi hoon. देखिए जिस तरह से मैंने रेंज की बात की वो तो इंतहाई सिंपल है और जाहिर है कि जब भी आप अप्लाई करेंगे तो आप इसी तरह इंतहाई सिंपली उसको आप कंप्यूट कर लेंगे लेकिन द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट आई विश टू कन्वे टू यू नाउ इज दैट जनरली स्पीकिंग फॉर एनी मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्जन वी वुड लाइक टू थिंक ऑफ इट एज the spread of the values around a central value. Yani, pehle hum apne zehen mein average ko laayenge aur uske baad hum wo jo spread hai, wo hum us average ke around measure karna chahate hai. Yani, is average ke hawale se kya zyada spread hai? from this average or is it only a little bit. So, let me now present to you the concept of the range with regard to an average that is relevant to the range. Aapko yaad hoga ke last lecture ke end mein humne mid range ka zikar kiya tha which was defined as x naught plus xm over 2. Now, 
the range can be defined as twice of the arithmetic mean of the deviations of the smallest and largest values around the mid range that is the range is equal to mid range minus x naught plus x m minus mid range over 2 and this whole quantity multiplied by 2 and solving this expression it will come out to be x m minus x naught exactly the same definition which I gave you earlier. So, baat ye bani ke ek mid range hai aur ek uska distance hai from x naught jise hum deviation kehte hain aur ek uska distance hai from x m jisko bhi hum deviation kehenge aur in dono deviations ka arithmetic mean agar hum le le aur use double kar de so that is equal to our range. तो ये सारे इस मखमसे में पढ़ने की क्या जरूरत थी? Only to convey to you that the range also follows that basic concept that generally we are trying to measure the dispersion of our data set around a central value. ये तो हुई range and as I said earlier this is an absolute measure of dispersion. Jis, jin units mein aapka original data hai, unhi units mein range bhi express hogi. Now, what is the corresponding relative measure of dispersion? As you now see on the screen, the relative measure of dispersion relevant to the range is called the coefficient of dispersion and it is given by half range divided by the mid range. In other words, x m minus x naught over 2 divided by x m plus x naught over 2, which on simplification becomes simply x m minus x naught over x m plus x naught. As I said earlier, this relative measure of dispersion is a pure number and therefore, it can be used for comparing the dispersion of two different data sets. For example, if the coefficient of dispersion of one data set comes out to be 0 0.6 and the coefficient of dispersion of another is 0 0.4 then it should be obvious that the spread of the first one is greater than the spread of the second one aur ye is baat ko madde nazar rakhte hue ke dono humne relative to the central point measure kiye hue hain. The next concept of dispersion that I am going to discuss with you is the quartile deviation and it is also known as the semi interquartile range. As you now see on the screen, the quartile deviation is defined as half of the difference between the third and the first quartiles. That is, quartile deviation is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. Aye, ab is measure ki graphical picture pe gaur karte hain. Aapko yaad hoga Q1 is that quantity which has 25 percent of the data before it and 75 percent after it. Similarly, Q3 is that quantity which has 75 percent area or data before it and 25 percent after it. So, as you now see on the screen, the quartile deviation or in other words, the semi interquartile range is the horizontal distance which is exactly half 
of the distance between the first quartile and the third quartile. So, you have seen that quartile deviation is a horizontal length express hoti hai. Ab, why is it that uh, in both the cases the case of the range and in the case of the quartile deviation we are having this uh, distance in a horizontal direction well students i hope that the answer is obvious to you ye jo frequency distribution aapne plot ki hai y axis jo hai wo to frequencies ko denote kar raha hai yani how frequently a certain x value occurred lekin jo x values khud hain jo hamara variable of interest hai jo hamari data values hain wo to bahar hal x axis par hi represent ho rahi hai na lihaza अगर हम उनकी आपस में वेरिएशन को मेजर करना चाहते हैं तो साफ जाहिर है कि दैट वेरिएशन इज गोइंग टू बी अलोंग दी एक्स एक्सिस यही वजह है कि इसके बाद जब मैं मीन डिविएशन और स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन का जिक्र करूंगी तो इवन दोस क्वांटिटीज विल बी एक्सप्रेस्ड एज हॉरिजॉन्टल डिस्टेंसेस बिलो दी एक्स एक्सिस कुछ देर पहले जब मैं रेंज की बात कर रही थी तो मैंने वाजे तौर पे आपको कन्वे किया कि अगर हमारे डेटा सेट में कोई एक्सट्रीमली लार्ज या एक्सट्रीमली स्मॉल वैल्यू हो कंपेयर्ड विद द रेस्ट ऑफ द वैल्यूज देन द रेंज इज नॉट एट ऑल सूटेबल एज अ मेजर ऑफ स्प्रेड अब ये जो क्वाटाइल डिविएशन है स्टूडेंट्स इसमें आप नोट करेंगे के वो जो रेंज का प्रॉब्लम था दैट हैज बीन ओवरकम अब जो डिस्टेंस है इट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन Q1 एंड Q3 और उसके बाद उसको हम हाफ कर देते हैं और Q1 जो है दैट इज नॉट ऑन द एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट ऑफ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन Q3 जो है दैट इज नॉट ऑन द एक्सट्रीम राइट उसके आगे तो 25% ऑफ द डेटा लाई करता है इससे पहले भी 25% परसेंट ऑफ द डेटा लाई करता है लिहाजा देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम नाउ द काइंड दैट वी हैड इन केस ऑफ द रेंज सो इन दिस रिगार्ड द क्वाटाइल डिविएशन इज सुपीरियर टू द रेंज एज अ मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्जन आइए अब हम क्वाटाइल डिविएशन को भी उस तरह इंटरप्रेट करने की कोशिश करते हैं जिस तरह अब से थोड़ी देर पहले मैंने रेंज के लिए किया था एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द क्वाटाइल डिविएशन कैन ऑल्सो बी व्यूड एज द अरिथमेटिक मीन ऑफ द डिविएशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड क्वाटाइल्स अराउंड द मीडियन दैट इज द क्वाटाइल डिविएशन इज इक्वल टू एम माइनस क्यू वन प्लस क्यू थ्री माइनस एम ओवर टू वेर एम रिप्रेजेंट्स द मीडियन एंड सॉल्विंग दिस एक्सप्रेशन इट कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू क्यू थ्री माइनस क्यू वन ओवर टू एग्जैक्टली द सेम फॉर्मूला दैट वी हैव फॉर द क्वाटाइल डिविएशन इन इट्स बेसिक डेफिनेशन तो फिर वही पहले की तरह की बात के एक तो हुआ मीडियन एक हुआ फर्स्ट क्वाटाइल और एक हुआ थर्ड क्वाटाइल नाउ द डिविएशन दैट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द मीडियन एंड द फर्स्ट क्वाटाइल एंड देन ऑन द अदर साइड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द मीडियन एंड द थर्ड क्वाटाइल we just simply take the arithmetic mean of these two deviations and this gives us a way of measuring the dispersion of our data set is discussion se aap pe wazeh ho gaya hoga ke quartile deviation hum us situation mein istemal karenge 
एज अ मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्जन जिस सिचुएशन में हम मीडियन को इस्तेमाल कर रहे होंगे एज द मोस्ट सूटेबल मेजर ऑफ सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी स्टूडेंट्स क्वाटाइल डिविएशन पोजेस क्वाइट एन अट्रैक्टिव प्रॉपर्टी एंड दैट इज दैट द मीडियन प्लस माइनस द क्वाटाइल डिविएशन कंटेन्स अप्रॉक्सिमेटली फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द डेटा एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द मीडियन ऑफ कोर्स लाइज इन द मिडल द मीडियन माइनस द क्वाटाइल डिविएशन विल बी अ पॉइंट टू द लेफ्ट साइड एंड द मीडियन प्लस क्वाटाइल डिविएशन इज ऑब्वियसली टू द राइट एंड द प्रॉपर्टी दैट आई हैव जस्ट कन्वेड टू यू सेज दैट फिफ्टी परसेंट और अप्रॉक्सिमेटली फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द डेटा विल लाइ बिटवीन दीज टू पॉइंट्स मीडियन माइनस क्वाटाइल डिविएशन एंड मीडियन प्लस क्वाटाइल डिविएशन स्टूडेंट्स मैं आपको एक क्वेश्चन थ्रो करती हूँ फर्ज कीजिए कि हमारी दो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैं दोनों सिमिट्रिक हैं और दोनों का मीडियन बिल्कुल बराबर है लेकिन एक का क्वाटाइल डिविएशन दूसरे के क्वाटाइल डिविएशन से दुगना है ऐसी सिचुएशन में इफ यू ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ बोथ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑन द सेम ग्राफ पेपर वॉट विल यू हैव ऑब्वियसली द वन विच हैज द डबल क्वाटाइल डिविएशन दैट विल बी मच वाइडर दैन द वन विच हैज द स्मॉलर क्वाटाइल डिविएशन लेट इस नाउ अप्लाई दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्वाटाइल डिविएशन टू एन एग्जाम्पल सपोज दैट द शेयर होल्डिंग स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ टू कंपनीज इज एज गिवन इन द टेबल दैट यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन फॉर कंपनी एक्स द फर्स्ट क्वाटाइल इज सिक्सटी शेयर्स द मीडियन इज वन एटी फाइव शेयर्स एंड द थर्ड क्वाटाइल इज टू सेवेंटी शेयर्स ऑन द अदर हैंड फॉर कंपनी वाई although the median is exactly the same as that for company x but the first quartile and the third quartile are quite different the first quartile is 165 shares and the third quartile 210 shares the quartile deviation for company x therefore comes out to be 270 minus 60 over 2 and that is equal to 105 shares on the other hand for company y it is equal to only 22 shares students from these computations i hope that it is obvious to you that there is considerable concentration of the shareholders around the median number of shares in company y in company x on the other hand we do not find this kind of a concentration there is an approximately same number of small medium and large shareholders mujhe ye sab kaise pata chala the answer is very simple just look at the quartile deviations for the two companies again for company x the quartile deviation is 105 shares but for company y the quartile deviation is only 22 shares the larger the quartile deviation the greater is the scatter of the values within the series and hence it is obvious that there is greater concentration around the median in company y as compared with company x from the above example it is obvious that the larger the quartile deviation the greater is the scatter of the values within the series now the question is how do we compute the quartile deviation 
in the case of raw data. For this purpose, let us go back to the example of the US zoological parks that we considered in lecture number 7. As you will recall, the example was displayed in the following table are the annual attendance figures in millions of visitors of 32 US public zoological parks. The figures are 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.2 and so on and all these figures are in millions. Now, we would like to compute the median, the first and third quartiles and the semi interquartile range for this data. Of course, you all know that the semi interquartile range is the same thing as the quartile deviation. In order to determine the values of the median and the upper and lower quartiles, students, we must first arrange the attendance figures in ascending order. As you now see on the slide, the arranged figures are 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and so on. Now, because we have an even number of values that is 32, therefore, the median is given by the average of the two middle values which are 1.0 and 1.1. Therefore, the median which is also known as the second quartile is equal to 1.0 plus 1.1 and this sum divided by 2 and therefore, we obtain 1.05. As far as the quartiles are concerned, students, I would like you to first note the following general rule. In order to compute Pj, the jth percentile from a set of n observations arranged in order from smallest to largest, we need to proceed as follows. Number 1, when j n over 100 is an integer, the jth percentile is given by the average of the j n by 100th and the j n by 100 plus 1th observations. Now, before I go to the second part of this rule, students, let us apply this first part to this particular example because as you will just see this first part is applicable in this particular example. Um, we wanted to find the first quartile Q1 and Q1 is the same thing as P25. Therefore, according to the rule we are talking about J equal to 25. And therefore, j n over 100 is equal to 25 n over 100 and because n is equal to 32, therefore, 25 into 32 divided by 100 comes out to be equal to 8 and 8 is an integer. Therefore, according to the rule that I just mentioned, we have to compute the average of the j n by 100th that is the 8th and the j n by 100 plus 1 earth that is the 9th observation. And students the 8th observation in our ordered data set was 0 0.6 whereas the 9th observation was 0 0.7 and therefore, the average of the two comes out to be 0 0.65. So, this is the first quartile or in other words the 25th percentile of this particular data set. Similarly, in order to compute Q3, we note that Q3 is the same thing as P75 and therefore, we are talking about J is equal to 75 and hence J n over 100 comes out to be 24 and that is also an integer. Therefore, once again we apply the same rule and we need to find 
the average of the JN by 100th, in other words, the 24th, and JN by 100 plus 1 earth, in other words, the 25th observation. So, students, in our ordered data set, the 24th value is 1.4 and the 25th value is 1.5 and therefore finding the average of the two our third quartile comes out to be 1.45. Now um, the interquartile range is given by Q3 minus Q1 and therefore subtracting 0 0.65 from 1.45 we obtain 0 0.8 million or in other words 800,000 as the interquartile range. Now students what is the interpretation of this result that we have just obtained? It means that the middle 50 percent of the attendance figures span a range of 0 0.8 million. This value is displayed along with the quartiles and the attendance data in the slide that you now have on the screen. Isse aapko ye idea ho gaya hoga ke interquartile range darmyan wali 50 feesad values ko cover karti hai. But students you remember? that we were interested in the quartile deviation which is none other than the semi interquartile range. Therefore, all we have to do now is to divide what we just obtained you know 0 0.8 to divide this by 2 and doing so we obtain the quartile deviation equal to 0 0.4 million. Now, before I end this discussion, students, I would like you to go back to the general rule that I started from regarding the computation of the jth percentile from a set of n observations arranged in order from smallest to largest. In this regard, the point to be noted is, and this is point number 2 versus point number 1 that I stated earlier that if j n over 100 is not an integer then the jth percentile is given by the value of the j n by 100 plus 1th observation but students please note that I have a special type of a bracket around j n over 100 in this particular expression and this kind of an expression with this kind of a bracket stands for the largest integer in j n over 100. Now students um, let me explain this with the help of a simple example and using the same uh, example that we were just considering. Suppose that we are interested in computing the 7th percentile for the data of the 32 zoological parks then j will be equal to 7 and we will have j n over 100 is equal to 7 into 32 divided by 100 and this is equal to 2.24. Obviously 2.24 is not an integer and according to the rule that I just mentioned the 7th percentile will be given by the 2 plus 1 earth that is the third observation and why is this the case because students the largest integer in the number 2.24 is 2. So we consider this largest integer and we add 1 to this number and that gives us 3 and we say that the 7th percentile is the value of the third observation. So students this is the way in which we compute the various 
percentiles, quartiles and deciles for raw data. Students, the quartile deviation is an absolute measure of dispersion. Jaisa ke main aapko pehle bata chuki hoon, absolute measure is that which is expressed in exactly the same units as the units of our data set. What is the relative measure of dispersion relevant to the quartile deviation? Students, it is known as the coefficient of quartile deviation and is expressed as the quartile deviation divided by the mid quartile range. As you will recall in the last lecture, the mid quartile range was defined as Q3 plus Q1 over 2 and if I divide the quartile deviation that is Q3 minus Q1 over 2 by the mid quartile range that is Q3 plus Q1 over 2 solving this expression we obtain Q3 minus Q1 over Q3 plus Q1. Once again this is a pure number and it can be used to compare the dispersion of two or more sets of data. Students quartile deviation is definitely an improvement on the range as I explained a short while ago. Likin is may be ye problem hai ke it is not based on all the values. You simply pick up the first quartile and the third quartile and you find their difference and you take half of it. The next two measures of dispersion that I am going to discuss with you, the mean deviation and the standard deviation. Ye do essay measures hain which are based on each and every observation in our data set. Aapko yaad hoga ke jab hum range ki baat kar rahe the, to maine aapse kaha ke wo jo mid range hai, goya hum uske around measure kar rahe dispersion. Isi tarah jab humne quartile deviation ki baat ki, tab maine median ka zikr kiya tha as the central value around which we were measuring the dispersion. Now the question is how will we measure the dispersion of the values around the arithmetic mean? Aapko malum to hai ke sabse zyada frequently used average to bahar hal arithmetic mean hi hai. To zahir hai students ke hamari jo sabse pehli approach hogi is is silsile mein that will be very similar to what we did just now in case of the range and in case of the quartile deviation. Humne distances measure kiye the around those central values and exactly that we will do now, now that we want the arithmetic mean to be considered as the central point and that is that we measure the distance of each and every data value from the mean. Denoting these distances by small d and considering their absolute values, the formula for the mean deviation becomes mean deviation is equal to sigma modulus of d over n. Ab is formula me do teen baate note karne ki hai. Pehli cheez to yehi ke aapne note kiya ke maine absolute values consider ki hai. Iski wajah yeh hai students ke agar mein sirf deviations ki baat karun without considering the absolute values then some of the deviations will be positive and some of the deviations will be negative and if I sum them my answer will be 0. Lekin 
जब हम एब्सोलूट वैल्यू ले लेते हैं तो इसका इससे ये होता है कि नेगेटिव डिविएशन भी पॉजिटिव हो जाती हैं एंड वेन वी सम देम वी ऑप्टेन अ पॉजिटिव आंसर एंड डिवाइडिंग दैट बाय द नंबर ऑफ डिविएशन वी आर ऑप्टेनिंग द एवरेज डिविएशन और इसीलिए इस मेजर का नाम है मीन डिविएशन आफ्टर ऑल मीन किसे कहते हैं एवरेज को तो लुब्बे लुबाव सारी बात का ये कि हमने डिविएशंस लेनी है ऑफ ऑल द वैल्यूज फ्रॉम द मीन हर डिविएशन की एब्सोलूट वैल्यू लेनी है और उसके बाद इन तमाम एब्सोलूट डिविएशंस को एवरेज कर देना है इस फॉर्मूले की डिटेल डिस्कशन हम इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में करेंगे एंड आफ्टर हैविंग डिस्कस्ड इट इन द केस ऑफ रॉ डेटा वी विल प्रोसीड टू द केस ऑफ ग्रुप्ड डेटा दैट इज व्हेन वी हैव अ फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आफ्टर दैट वी विल प्रोसीड टू द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट मेजर ऑफ डिस्पर्जन एंड दैट इज द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन in the meantime i would like you to practice the concept of the range the coefficient of dispersion the quartile deviation and the coefficient of quartile deviation my best wishes to you and until next time allah hafiz